some news coming in from the Delhi High Court, which is hearing NIA's appeal seeking death penalty for separatist Yasin Malik. The Solicitor General Tushar Mehta has argued that his outfit, the JKLF, abducted Rubaya Saeed in 1989, who was the daughter of then Home Minister. This resulted in release of dreaded terrorists who then carried out the 26-11 attack, which were the Mumbai attacks. The court, with then understanding, went on a short recess and the hearing will resume post-noon, is what we are understanding. Let's also now bring in our legal correspondent, Ananya Bhatnagar. Ananya, good morning. Help us understand what's happening at the High Court. Well, uh, you know, uh, the Solicitor General uh, of India, Mr. Tushar Mehta, is appearing for the National Investigation Agency and is pressing for a death penalty to be given to, uh, in fact, Yasin Malik. Remember that this is an order in uh, 2022 by Delhi's Patella House Court, which had sentenced Yasin Malik to imprisonment for life after he had pleaded guilty in the JNK terror funding case. And uh, the clear charge against Yasin Malik was uh, to be carrying out secessionist activities in the state of Jammu and Kashmir and also waging a war against the country. Now, this particular submission came in with regards to, you know, uh, all the charges against Yasin Malik, wherein it is it was said that he is majorly responsible for killing four IAF officials in, in the 90s. Remember that when, when the situation in Kashmir uh, was uh, very, very, uh, very dense and there were killings that were happening, JKLF was a prominent wing and a prominent organization which has carried out the terrorist activities. Is what, uh, in fact, the National Investigation Agency is also pressing for saying that more than 98 FIRs against the JKLF led to its ban in 2019 and uh, Mr. Yasin Malik was actually the founder and was the head of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the JKLF. He had also attended, it's been also contended by the Solicitor General of India that he, uh, in fact, crossed the borders and went to Pakistan to receive, uh, to receive um, weapons training. Uh, these, are, these are all the charges that were read out uh, by uh, Mr. Tushar Mehta. However, the court wanted certain documents uh, with regards to the detailed order which were read out, detailed order on charges which were read out to Yasin Malik when he pleaded guilty. And since that particular document was not on record, the, um, the court has granted time to the NIA to actually submit that um, particular document and come back at 12.15 when the hearing in this particular matter would resume, uh, would resume and the Solicitor General would be putting forth its submission. Now, uh, interestingly, Yasin Malik is not being represented at this stage in, uh, uh, you know, in the, these proceedings. However, uh, as we have been told by our sources is that, you know, okay. Yasin Malik has been uh, um, um, uh, served an sure. advance notice in this petition because remember that this is a criminal appeal uh, wherein without an advance notice, the appeal would not be admitted by the registry of the High Court itself. So okay. uh, why has Yasin Malik not represented himself? Is it, uh, you know, a technique to buy time or is it a way to delay the hearing okay. is something that we sure. get to know in a short while from now when the hearing actually resumes at 12.15. Okay, Ananya, we'll have to leave that conversation there. Thanks a lot for getting us all those details.